Now, if you went to McDonald's every day and got a burnt hamburger and burnt fries, are you going to keep going back to that McDonald's? I know that Leader Beverly said, no, he's not going. And that's what the children are saying. I don't want to go where the burnt hamburger is. I don't want to go where the burnt fries are. I want a fresh hamburger. I want a fresh education. I want something different. Just give me something different. I am actually screaming because I am the child that will benefit from this. There are some things that are not all the way right for this, and we can fix that later. But if one child, one child can benefit from this, then you should vote for SB 233. And for all the lobbyists, you do not have to roll your eyes at me when you see me. Because it's, good. it's another subject that might come up that you, we might agree on. But just because we don't agree on this, and this is for my colleagues too, you do not have to treat me so badly because I am trying to help the children in my community. And Speaker, I yield the will. Breaking news, Georgia Democrats are threatening to primary Misha Maynard for standing up for parents and students in her district. Misha Maynard was the only Democrat to stand up in support of school choice in Georgia last week, and now members of her own party are threatening to take her out. This is why Democrats don't support school choice, is because their own party will just take them out for doing the right thing. She came out in support of school choice because that's what the people in her district want. She published her thoughts afterwards and made the point that Democratic lawmakers will cry about all of these things that the party cares about. Yet when a black independent female Democrat legislature who grew up in poverty wants to give the bottom 25 percent of children attending failing schools a second chance at education, the Democratic Party is infuriated and actually threatens to primary her. This is what happens when you put politics and special interest groups above what's good for kids and good for your constituents. Bravo, Misha Maynard, your champion. I hope your district recognizes that. All right, guys, so we have a feel-good story to talk about here about a Georgia Democrat who happens to be a black woman, a strong black woman, because it does take a strong person to do what she did, which is to abandon the Democrat Party and to become a Republican because quite simply, Democrats don't align with her values. Again, this is something that we should be saying almost on a daily basis because it's quite clear that Democrats really don't have black people's interests or really America's interests really uh, at heart, okay? Their policies are not good for America. They're not good for black people and they're especially not good for children, right? If you're voting primarily because of children, I'm not sure how in the world can you look at the Democrat party platform and say that yeah 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 this is the platform that is going to help america's children right because democrats simply want kids to be woke activists they're not concerned at all about their education which is why a lot of these inner liberal cities their schools are failing okay they're absolute disasters i've done multiple stories on my channel about how uh kids in these schools can't read or write or do math at grade level proficiency it's really sad, okay, that our kids in this country are growing up dumb. But again, they know about TikTok. They know about woke activism. They know about everything that they probably should not know about. Um, and uh, that's a problem. And this one Democrat decided that, you know what, enough is enough, okay? And that Democrat is Georgia State Representative Miss Misha Menor who represents the Peach State, okay, uh, more specifically District 56 in the Georgia House, uh, in which she actually came out in support of a school choice bill uh, that would have created $6,500 uh, vouchers for students at schools performing in the bottom 25% in the state to help pay for private school tuition and homeschooling expenses if they were inclined so this was pushed by the republicans led by brian kemp uh and it would have passed considering that the um georgia legislature is republican controlled however 16 house republicans voted it down now this woman uh is one of the only democrats that actually voted for the bill and apparently she faced a massive backlash from democrats for being in support of school choice again you had democrats that were basically offering money 
to anybody who will run against their colleague because again democrats don't like when people disagree with them they especially don't like when black people disagree with them and that prompted uh this democrat representative to switch parties because she said you know what our values just simply don't align take a look i am state representative misha Maynard, and i represent district 56 in the heart of our state's capital we have been on a journey together for two terms, and we've had some wins, but there is a better path, and we can do so much more. That is why today I am announcing that I am joining the Republican Party. I'm State Representative Misha Maynard, and recently I found myself in the crosshairs of my Democratic caucus. In the Georgia House of Representatives, I represent a solidly blue and highly diverse district, and I have never hesitated and will never hesitate to vote for the best interests of the communities I represent over party politics. I support school choice, parent rights, and opportunities for children to thrive, especially those that are marginalized and attend a failing school. The Democrats at the Capitol took a hard position and demanded every Democrat vote against children and for the teachers union. I voted yes for parents and yes for children, not failing schools. Some of the schools I represent have a 3% reading proficiency or children can't do simple math. So I have a few colleagues upset with me to the point where they are giving away $1,000 checks to anyone that will run against me. I'm not apologizing because my colleagues don't like how I vote. When my community loves the fact that someone is finally sticking up for them and holding these systems accountable. Let's be real. Parents do not want their child trapped in a failing school. And they aren't frustrated with teachers. They're upset with the elected leaders that put the teachers union and donors ahead of their constituents. If you listen to the people working so hard to push me out of office, you think I actually did something wrong. But in reality, they are upset I didn't do what they demanded, like a good little girl. But it's ironic. I'll say every election year, I hear Black Lives Matter. But do they? I see every other minority being prioritized except Black children living in poverty that can't read. We'll send a million dollars to the border for immigrant services, but black communities, not even a shout out. I'm sorry, I don't agree with this. I'm not backing down and I'm actually just getting started. Yeah, so you seen that you heard that. No surprises, right? Uh, Democrats get mad when black people think for themselves, right? When you decide that, hey, you know what? I don't wanna go along with this policy that's clearly not in the best interest of my constituents. Democrats don't give a damn um, they threatened to primary you and to uh, basically have you removed from office because, again, you simply disagree with them. Uh, it's just funny how that works, right? Minorities are not able to decide, hey, this is what's best for me. No, 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 <laughs> right? Democrats decide what's best for a so-called minority. So I actually read a little bit more about this because it'll give you a better understanding of some of the backlash you faced because this has been something that has been uh, happening for a while now. So let's read here. In the wake of the 2023 legislative session, an intra-party conflict has accelerated around state representative Misha Menor, an Atlanta Democrat who regularly takes votes against her party, most recently to support the controversial school voucher bill. So again, I'm not so sure what's so controversial about <laughs> giving parents the option of sending their kids to private school, especially when you're talking about parents uh, of kids that attend low performing schools, right? Uh, these are probably going to be parents of low income. Again, it's just amazing to me how Democrats and liberals and progressives seem to be so focused on fixing uh, so called disparities, right? But when it comes to opportunity to do so in education, they don't want to do it, right? Apparently, they're not interested in, in helping low income people and fixing disparities that black people face. They're not. They're not interested anymore. Again, it's amazing how that works. Menorah uh, represents Atlanta's deep blue 56th state house district 
stretching from Westview up into Midtown. Yeah, so again, it's going to be up to them to decide whether or not uh, they want to continue to vote Democrat or they're going to try something different, right? Especially as their schools are failing. She was the only Democrat to support the voucher bill that failed on the final day of the session. That prompted public pushback from some of her Democratic colleagues and even an offer by State Senator Josh McLaurin, a Democrat from Sandy Springs, to donate $1,000 to a possible primary opponent. In an interview, Menor told Axios, quote, I don't think I vote with the Republicans. I vote for what my constituents need. No party has all the answers. This is true, right? This is very true. She supports vouchers, she said, because her district has the most charter schools in the state. Parents in my district are fed up. And Menor insists there are other Democrats who agree but are afraid to go public. Quote, I'm not the only one. People afraid of Josh McLaren putting $1,000 checks on the table. In a statement to Axios, McLaurin said, quote, there are at least as many members who know Representative Menor is more a Republican than a Democrat, not just on vouchers, but on a range of issues. But they're also hesitant to make that public. Since taking office in 2021, Menor has frequently broken ranks with her party. Last year, she supported a special needs voucher and a ban on localities from lowering police budgets. And this year voted for a new prosecutorial oversight commission pushed by Republicans. Wow. So again, uh, she doesn't want to defund the police. Okay. Uh, she uh, supports school vouchers. Right. And apparently that makes her a white supremacist. Okay. That makes her a full blown conservative. Okay. Makes her a Republican. Right. <laughs> Again, that's just how crazy, how outrageous the Democrat Party has become. But again, if Republicans are the party of common sense, then they should embrace it. She also stood against the rest of the Fulton County Democrat Caucus over its redistricting maps, a.k.a. trying to rig elections, right, in favor of Democrats, which, you know, Democrats love to do, but then they turn around and complain when Republicans do it, right? But they love redistricting, okay? They love gerrymandering. Uh, intra-party democratic fights are rarely public at the Capitol because the caucus generally has to stick together as a minority party to wield influence. Uh, Menor says she will never switch parties and she intends to run for re-election. Uh, however, she did come out and uh, <laughs> switch parties, right? Apparently, it got so bad that she went back on that and decided that, hey, she's going to switch parties. Which, again, good for her, right? Good for her. I guess that, you know, maybe, just maybe... I guess the negative thing about this is that because she's no longer a Democrat, they can't say that school choice is a bipartisan thing anymore, right? Well, this is fully partisan, which is what Democrats will say uh, because she switched parties. But regardless, if things are so irreconcilable that, you know, she can't even, you know, stay in the party anymore, she feels the need to switch, then it is what it is, right? It's about time that, uh, you know, black people get another choice. Right. I mean, her district is primarily Democrat. It'll be interesting to see if she actually gets reelected. I hope that she does. Right. And I hope that that opens the door for Democrats, specifically black Democrats in these inner liberal cities to vote Republican. Right. Because, hey, um, you know, now they have a Republican representing them. And just maybe just maybe this is an easier way for them to vote Republican without all the stigma. Again, she's a black woman. Um, you know, she probably is liberal on a lot of other issues, right? Probably like race and stuff like that. Um, so it can't be that hard of a pill to swallow. However, we will see. If she actually loses her seat in the next election, then you'll kind of know that, hey, the stigma is so bad against Republicans in some of these heavily blue districts or some of these mostly black districts that um, maybe it's just it's impossible, even if you are a Democrat that clearly is trying to act in the best interest of your constituents. But you say, hey, you know what? I'm going to switch to the Republican Party because Democrats aren't acting in your best interest. If she loses, OK, at the win and by nearly 40 points. Right. Uh, you know, in the last election, she did run unopposed. But still, if she loses, then again, there's no hope for black folks. Right. There's no hope whatsoever which in my opinion i already think that there's really no hope in regards to our voting uh habits and tendencies but i think that this will be a uh interesting uh test to see once she's up for re-election but anyways congratulations to her it took a whole lot of cojones for her to do this and um we'll see right we'll see 
uh, what happens in the future. But let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black sort of perspective. Peace.